Hey, it's Summel Guy Coning again today, and today we're going to start the final assembly of the Lowrider 2 build. So I've got uh, you kind of stuck over in a corner here, and I've got my table kind of cranked out halfway, hanging over empty space, just so we can get a good view of what we're starting with here. And uh, here's one of the side panels. This happens to be the side panel for me that's going to go on the other side where I stand. It has zero switches, uh, like we probably mentioned before. Let me turn it around here. We have a zero switch right there. For down on that end, <clears throat> we have a Z zero switch right here. And I've got to, when I, once I have it all together, I'll adjust the stick out on this guy and glue it in uh, to be the right amount of stick out to uh, hit that switch. Then finally, we have one more zero for the dual, uh, dual end switch. Uh, uh, build here or uh, auto squaring. I have this top end switch here too that's for the short axis. So that's that guy is right there and that's the one that tells me for sure that this goes on the other side. So let me get the wires out of the way and I am just going to set it down over here. <coughs> then we have of course the 611 plate that's all complete here. The laser is attached. I ordered a 12 volt power supply with some pretty good amperage to make sure that we're not having any voltage drops on this. I think I was having voltage drops before running from the PC power supply. And uh, I think we're all set to go there. Um, if, you're, uh, uh, if you're one of my patrons supporting me at patreon.com then you've probably seen the picture before where I had a partial assembly here and forgot this part. So we're going to try not to forget that part this time. Let me move this over here. <clears throat> so absolutely uh, support me on Patreon. You'll get uh, uh, the occasional, uh, you know, Patreon only feeds. <clears throat> it's always a nice thing to have. And then finally we have the side panel that goes over on this side. We got the schmutz protector in here again and uh, lots of an experiment and the end switch for this z-axis side over here and the end switch uh, for the long axis over here so that's why this goes on this side because it's going to zero down that way so the first thing i'm going to do is clamp this in position over on this side so i don't have to have you know six hands holding everything so i'm just going to take a regular old clamp try not to lose those pipes this time and there they go Get it up in there, get it up against the uh, get it up against the uh, table here so that that kind of holds the, the uh, pipes in there. And then I'm just going to take a clamp and I'm just going to kind of clamp it right on there so it isn't going in any place for a little bit. Ta-da! We'll pull this guy down there to where it belongs. So that'll sit there for a few minutes while I can deal with some of the other things. Now. I ordered these things off of Amazon, these uh, um, stainless steel pipes. I think they're the size that were specified originally by Ryan, but uh, I came to the conclusion that they weren't quite long enough for me, so apparently I tried to maximize the width of my table for the given pipe I had, and I just pushed it just a little too far. What I've got instead is uh, like on one side this thing won't quite stick all the way through the uh, through the gripping assembly up here so I printed some of these guys that uh, kind of pop right in there very nicely and sometimes they're actually hard to get out but I'm gonna put one of these on each end uh, it's not really gonna be supporting much other than just making sure that the clamping mechanism has something to clamp down on on both sides nice and even and this has a hole in it of course so we can get the cables through printed in PLA and if somebody wants it I can certainly uh, share the design online. It may vary depending on the size of your pipes or if your pipes are like mine not quite the inside diameter that I was expecting. You know uh, you can certainly adjust it. But they're easy they're just a couple of cylinders hollowed out and printed a couple of times until they fit. So I've got some slow drying um, Super glue here. And I'll just go ahead and uh, make sure that those things stay in. 
There, that one's in. Make sure this is the right size, not one of the test ones. No, that's the right size. So let's take a little thick super glue and spin around the outside there. I know I got that bottle for some reason. We'll pop it in over there and we'll let those. They probably don't even really need to cure very long because there's not going to be any pressure on the printed pieces. Uh, yeah, really no pulling on them at least. So we have another piece here and other pipes. It's embarrassing when your tubing comes up short. All right, so now we got some nice, uh, nicely tipped stainless steel. Very nice. So we'll go ahead and start getting this set up for the pipe insertion here. Just set these guys right here. Try not to break the any of the uh, fluorescent tubes overhead. So being that side panel is held up tight against the side of the uh, frame here, the pipes will have to go in like this and not like that with this resting down here. Um, it'll be difficult to put in and we'll put it, you know, for torque on the side panel but I really don't want. So with this combination of uh, stuff to stack up under it here, it comes out to be just about the right height. So we're going to use this here just to support those ends. And now with this one just in the right spot, in fact it's already slid through here to the uh, to the hole, through the hole. Let's flip this. Remember uh, I taped those little dividing uh, uh, pieces already on the on the pieces here so they're already taped on with some green tape so I don't have to fiddle too much with them to get them to go so I'm gonna put that up flush on this side and we'll see what it looks like once we have the other side done we can always adjust it if necessary and we'll just snug this up a bit doesn't have to be overly tight according to Ryan I want to make sure that this uh, pipe over here is in the right spot in there. It is. Not too high or low. And these 6x32 screws, the, just the general ones you get are rather annoying because if you start slipping on the head they're, they're quickly damaged to uh, unusability. So keep some force on the screws and be careful that uh, you're not stripping. I want to make sure they're at least all snug and the bolts aren't moving around. There, let's see how that feels. Oh, that's perfect. I can't move it. And I didn't even tighten it up that much. So let's go for the other one here and see how well that works. I'm just going to slip my finger in here to make sure that the, uh, the little uh, dividing piece is uh, slid in a position where I can get this in. And it is. And we'll just go just like that flush. Now this is the hard side. I have to block the camera. Sorry about that. Let's see how this one feels. Oh yeah, that's not going any place. So I'm going to try to move this without dropping anything. Ouch. Or knocking the supports out from under my, my pipes here. Now, in an effort not to make the same mistake twice, I'm going to go ahead and slide this guy on. I can get him out from under there. There we go. Oh boy, that's heavy. It's a little heavy with that extra weight of the laser on there, so we'll see how that works. We have a couple of options here. Let me put this down for a second and go back over here. You can see that I've got the um, angle bracket on this side. That's going to be the support bracket, the aluminum uh, angle bracket that goes across. And I'll be putting the angle bracket on the same side over here. But what that means is there probably isn't going to be enough room for the laser here. It's probably going to have to go over the top of the uh, of the stepper motor. So we'll go ahead and orient this uh, 611 plate in that direction. Slide these guys through. There we go. There we go. Aha, I've got it on there this time. Take that like out of the way for a second. Slide it down. Ta-da! 
Now I'll put these guys back up just to hang on to that pipe so it doesn't bend down and uh, to put too much torque on the other side. So there we are. I've got the 611 doohickey in here and now we'll let will that plate come across? Yes it will. It will fit just a, right next to the uh, it'll, let me make sure this is in camera first. It'll fit right next to the, uh, the roller brackets here. So that looks good. And it'll go across the top of the motor without a problem. Alrighty. And then we just have this other side to put on. Make sure I'm in the shot. Hello! There we are. Good job. And uh, we'll grab this guy. He's already got the uh, shirt pipes in. <clears throat> Hopefully they won't fall out on me. I'm just going to weasel that guy in there. Push that little center piece aside so we can get things through. And I've got it clamped on the other side, so hopefully I can push without uh, it falling off. <laughs> That'd be a drag. Reposition that guy. This side is uh, looking like it wants to go through, but this side isn't. So I'm just going to reach in there with this little guy and push that little divider piece over. There we go. Now it's going. How about this side? Aha! It went on. I'm just going to go ahead and continue to slide that on there. Smack it on there maybe, huh? Yes! It's on! All the way up to the, all the, way up to the vertical pipes up against the wood. And I've got about that much sticking out on this side. So yes, we're, we're good on, uh, on the distance now. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten these clamping brackets down. Make sure that this pipe is all the way up to the spot where it's supposed to get caught up there. Once again, you don't have to tighten them down uh, really tight because uh, there's a lot of pressure being placed on here by these brackets. You don't want to break the brackets. That would be a drag. Helps if you get the uh, screwdriver in the screw. There we go. There we go. The bottom one here. All right, that is not going anyway. So let's go ahead and release this uh, by pulling these guys out. Oh. And we should be able to let go of this clamp over here now too. It should roll. It rolls. It's getting uh, caught on some wires over here, but it rolls. All righty. See how it feels uh, turning the uh, screw up and down here. It seems to go up nicely. Pushes back down. Let's check this side over here. Drive that one up a little bit. Yep, it goes up. It pushes right back down. So I think we're good. I think we're fairly parallel on both ends. If you find that you have some binding um, on the uh, on the uh, lead screws, make sure uh, that you. One thing you can do is you can loosen up the um, lead screw nut a little bit. If you tighten it down really tight, if there's any imperfections there on that printed piece, it might be a little, you know, off, cockeyed one way or the other. And those screws only keep the uh, lock nut from turning. It doesn't hold them down. You don't have to worry about that. So, all right, looks good. I gotta get my wires unhooked here. It's a little snug on both sides, you know, from here to there. It's grabbing, uh, gripping the sides of the table very firmly, which isn't necessarily a good thing. Why don't we just tap this side out just a little bit. Let's see if that loosens that up. Yeah, that's better. Maybe even just another tappy. Oh, that's much better. Nice. Oh my god, he's hitting PLA, but you know, this is, uh, I put four shells on here and I use a pretty good infill, especially on these top pieces here. I didn't want to have to, if I did over tighten something, I didn't want to have to snap the part and replace it. So, overkill probably, but there it is, and the top part here moves too. Woohoo! Rolls back. Lopsided. All right, so there we are with that part. 
So we basically have it together. Now we're just going to do some wiring and the belt business. So um, we'll proceed into that next. Thanks for watching.